Welcome to the Late Show. In here, out there, everybody playing hooky. I'm your host. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Out here on camera. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. It's a rainy day here in New York. Before the storm, the National Weather Service urged New Yorkers to take it slow today <laughs> if traveling. Now, if you want to take it slow, just walk behind any tourist in Midtown. <laughs> what are you looking up out there? It's a building. Don't they have bricks where you come from? <laughs> of course, we're not the only place that has weather. From an atmospheric river to tornadoes to today's rain, extreme weather has struck coast to coast. Scientists agree that all these extreme weather events are tied to global warming, which is happening whether you believe it or not. For the record, many Americans choose not because a new poll says 45% of Americans don't believe humans cause climate change. It doesn't matter what you believe, it's true. That's like not believing that humans cause pants pooping. It's just part of the natural cycle of my khakis. <laughs> I'm gonna leave them for my grandchildren to deal with. <laughs> so the planet's in trouble. Mm. But luckily, this weekend, world leaders are gathering yet again to wear lanyards about it <laughs> at COP26, the 26th United Nations Climate Change Conference. 26th? Holy crap, this crisis is so old, it could rent a car. <laughs> but it shouldn't ride a bike, climate change. Now, the conference starts on October 31st. Yes, it's a climate change spooktacular! <laughs> Those weren't actually special effects. That was just a storm caused by irreversible changes to the jet scream! <laughs> President Biden and other world leaders will meet to address the ongoing climate crisis in Glasgow, Scotland. They're meeting in Scotland? Even if they do solve climate change, we'll never know. <laughs> Cheers, laddies. After hours of haven and we don't well agree to reduce methane emissions caused by fat and coos by 27. <laughs> Go away now. <laughs> Close. Close. Something like that. Yeah. Something like that. Because COP26 has taken place in the UK, we've gotten a preview of what to expect from British Prime Minister and cartoon <laughs> and happy cartoon duckling Boris Johnson. <laughs> Johnson doesn't seem too optimistic about what world leaders can achieve at COP26, as he told a group of children. It's going to be very, very tough, this summit. And I'm very worried because it, it, might, go, it might go wrong. There's the can-do British spirit. <laughs> Reminds me of those posters during World War II. Keep calm, Hitler might win. <laughs> this conference could be one of our last chances to make bold collective action to avert climate disaster. It's already not going well because the leaders of China and Russia said they won't be at the summit, even though China and Russia produce some 32% of global CO2 emissions. The big polluters aren't even there. This is an all-or-nothing situation. Arby's motto isn't, we have some meats. <laughs> There's another storm soaking America. It's called inflation. Right now, shoppers are facing faster increases in prices for consumer goods than at any point this century, including gas, which has jumped $1.22 over the last year. Terrible news, but you know who won't be reporting it? the propagandists over at Gas Pump TV. <laughs> Their biggest story is buy one, get one Coke Zero at the BP convenience. <laughs> High prices are also hitting food, the gas of the mouth. <laughs> According to economists, breakfast is about to get a whole lot more expensive. Oats are up more than 80%, and the price of sugar and lean hogs are up, which means record prices for America's favorite cereal, cinnamon toast ham. <laughs> And I could go for some of that. That sounds... <laughs> thanks to inflation, Thanksgiving 2021 could be the most expensive meal in the history of the holiday. And that's saying something. 
The first Thanksgiving cost Native Americans an entire continent. <laughs> now, no part of Thanksgiving table. Oh, too soon? It's too oh, soon? Sin, sin, so. No part of the Thanksgiving table is safe. High prices are hitting sweet potatoes, pie, dinner rolls, even the disposable aluminum turkey roasting pan. Not the aluminum roasting pan. That's the moistest part of the turkey. <laughs> Even canned cranberry sauce will cost more, in part because China is limiting steel production to reduce carbon emissions. What? You lied to us, Greta Thunberg. <laughs> you told us fighting climate change would be hard, but you never told us the cost. A world without can-shaped towers of gelatinous red sugar plasma. <laughs> At least we can get stuff in the United States, unlike the UK, which is currently facing crippling shortages. I'll tell you all about it in tonight's Cargo Unchained British Edition. Please, sir, can I have some anything? The Brits were already having supply chain issues because of Brexit when COVID hit. Now food is so scarce that some supermarkets are filling empty produce sections and bare store shelves with pictures of whatever items should have been in those places. Yes. Things have gotten so bad that the technical challenge on the great British baking show this week was paper mache brownies. <laughs> now, let's see what these actual cardboard groceries look like. Here's some asparagus. If you eat it, your pee smells like cardboard. <laughs> or you could try the cardboard carrots. And evidently, they also ran out of photos of cardboard carrots. <laughs> Fun fact, this is true, those non-carrots were photographed at a supermarket in the real town called Fakenham. <laughs> it's right between On the Nosington and Wiscrudshire. <laughs> Some stores aren't even putting in the effort to print actual photos of food, opting instead for outlines of generic products. <laughs> at least that's what I think it is. It could be the chalk outline of food that was murdered. <laughs> Back stateside over the weekend, we learned that the Capitol riot got planning help from Republican lawmakers like Alabama congressman and man pausing mid-speech to order a round of breadsticks. <laughs> Mo Brooks. Rolling Stone reports that Brooks met with Stop the Steal organizers prior to January 6th, but Brooks says he had no involvement in the rally until January 5th, when he claims the White House first asked him to speak. That's not much of a defense. <laughs> Your Honor, my client swears he had nothing to do with the bank robbery until the day before. <laughs> when he was asked to drive the getaway car, and then, of course, when he drove the car. <laughs> it's hard to believe that Brooks had no sense of what was coming since he spoke at the rally while wearing body armor. That's like showing up to your surprise party in a full ball gown and tiara. <laughs> Something tells me you were tipped off. Oh, my God, the fall of democracy. You guys, you shouldn't have. <laughs> Brooks uh, washed his hands of any involvement, but said his staff might have been involved. Wow. Way to throw your team under the campaign bus. Reminds me of Harry Truman's famous plaque. The buck stops there. Where my assistant sits. Get her! <laughs> if you don't like that joke, I had nothing to do with it, but my writers might have been involved. <laughs> Another... <laughs> Please be over. <laughs> oh, my you. God! Cold bloody. Another alleged coup conspirator is Arizona representative and inventor of the dick face selfie, <laughs> Paul Gosar. Gosar ignored reports that he encouraged the insurrection, instead choosing to post a meme of his head photoshopped onto James Bond. <laughs> it's appropriate. After all, Gosar's IQ is 007. <laughs> and there you go. That's a simple one. Alabama. It's simple. Yeah, the people like it. Makes them. people happy. And if he helped plan the riot, he'll be lucky to be out on bond. <laughs> Bail bond. <laughs> Here's my problem. Everyone knows when you're photoshopping your head onto Daniel Craig's body, you're supposed to use this picture. It's science. Hold on, wait. Let me fix one thing. Okay, <laughs> now it's perfect. We got a great show for you tonight. My guest is CBS's own Katie Couric. But when we come back, meanwhile.